Living on the boat in what seems to be the rainiest year in Florida, we've noticed one flaw in the water runoff system on lagoons. Whenever it rains, the water sheets off the front of the coach roof and through the front windows, making it impossible to leave the windows open at any level of precipitation, which is frustrating because we love the fresh air. So we created this custom eyebrow for the front of the coach roof to make a new gutter system, directing the water out and away from the windows. And now, with a light precipitation, we're able to leave the windows open without it flooding on the inside. After grinding all the factory non-skid off the coach roof, the first step was primer. Swing your foot okay, all the way back. There, there you go. go. Oh my gosh. All right, morning guys. Today is paint day. So all this prep we've done on this coach roof, we're now ready to roll paint. So it is about 7.45 in the morning. It's supposed to be no rain today. And we're gonna do our best to get two coats on today. And so we're gonna start by getting our paint shook and tacking everything down, blowing and wiping and cleaning and acetone and all that stuff. And then we are gonna have to paint this coach roof by maintaining a wet edge. So you can't just start at one section and paint all the way around because by the time you get back, the edge where you started will be dry and you'll see the seam. So as you paint to the left and to the right, you've got to bounce back and forth and maintain a continuous wet edge as it moves out and around the entire boat i don't know how we're gonna do that um but we're gonna we're gonna do our best so i'm gonna show you what this is gonna look like all all of this surface here we've got to continue to paint this direction this direction this direction of course we'll get to stop at the at the uh non-skid we're just painting this section for now we're gonna do this and back up around the back of the helm when we're on the water. Um, it's just too much for us to do before we get launched here in the next two weeks. <laughs> well, while the boat is de-rigged, we might as well take all the rest of the hardware off and get one fresh pretty coat of paint or two coats of paint. Are you ready? As ready as I can be. Paint day. <laughs> Twelve continuous wet edges. Oh, Twice in one day. We'll get it. No stress. Bye. Go team. We decided to make cut lines to define a stopping point between the sections that were going to get non-skid and the sections that were going to stay smooth. We then smoothed the edges of the tape as flat as possible and then wiped the tape and surrounding areas with acetone to make sure that there was nothing to prevent adhesion of the paint. We chose to use the Alexial primer and top coat in the shade of cloud white to paint our boat and initially decided to use a roll and tip method to apply. After a bit of trial and error, we discovered that the roll additive from Alexial we used in our paint mixture was actually causing more problems when trying to tip with the brush and leaving streak marks. So we didn't need to use the brush at all. We needed to paint the perimeter of the coach roof where there wouldn't be any non-skid first. 
This was particularly difficult because of all the different angles and edges. The visibility difference between the top side that was in full sun and the underside that was completely shaded was a nightmare. This is the lack of concentration <laughs> right here. After we painted the perimeter, we taped off the areas getting non-skid with a 3M fine line tape to get a crisp line. It also gave us the opportunity to make smooth curves without the tape buckling and folding over like blue tape often does. Once the tape was placed, we sanded the edges down with 180 grit to make sure that our tape lines were as flat and as smooth as possible. All right, so what we're doing is we are hitting all of the non-skid area where we had overlap paint from uh, doing all the smooth top coat and where the primer was and rolling over top of it, we just rolled primer in, but that left some high spots and ridges. And I actually don't know how much is gonna print through through the non-skid. So we're just trying to take everything down with 180. So we have a nice smooth surface. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna lay out our solar panels. That's six of them over there. And we're gonna see if we can squeeze six on top. And then where all of the penetration points go through, uh, what I wanna do is... We didn't end up doing this process, so let's just skip through it. But what we're doing, we're gonna put the camera up so you can see some time lapse of us putting everything on and rolling the non skid on. We are gonna use a product called uh, Soft Sand, and we're using their medium grit, which is about one and a half times or twice as coarse. Sorry about the sound of the grain. Um, as all grips and it's supposed to have a little rubber cushion to it. So the way you apply that is we'll put one generous coat, not running, but a generous coat of top coat down inside the non-skid area. And then we shake this product on until it completely covers like, like a glitter project when you were a kid. We wait for that to set and then we gently broom off or vacuum off the excess and then two coats of top coat go on top of that. We should be done, peel the tape, put all the hardware in and Move on to the holes. So it's September in Florida, and apparently it's the rainiest month in Florida. As if we haven't had enough rain this year. So when you try to get ahead of yourself and you roll too much paint and back roll into the area where you were working and you rush, your, uh, your non-skid turns out looking like a hammer bag of shit. And as much as you'd think that you could just put sand down over top of it or whatever non-skid material and it would hide a multitude of sand, which it does, um, we sanded everything smooth so there was really nothing to hide. All of our air came in not applying the right amount of paint in the right pace and trying to keep the uh, non-skid out of the out of the paint and the wind is blowing and it's blowing it into your wet edge and you're trying to back roll into it which is just caking it up and putting raised ridges like this it's a it's a pain in the ass now I think inside or in March in Florida calm winds I think it would work out great but all mistakes happen and we're not just about showing everything that good happens this is the bad so we're having to sand the front sections of the coach roof on both sides plus part of the helm plus up over here in front of these this line basket up over top of the coach roof to get all of the damage out and we have to start all over again and it's an expensive mistake once our mistake was repaired we were ready to start adding our first coat of paint on top of the non-skid And of course, because we had pulled out the paint, Mother Nature decided to bring us rain. We used a sheet of leftover Dr. Shrink from building our tent structure to cover the coach roof during storms. Wow. 
When there was a break in the rain, we would pull the plastic halfway back just in case we needed to act quick and cover the coach roof again, which evidently we needed to do. At this point though, we decided to call it a day. The rain didn't seem to really be going away and we were losing daylight. The next morning, we continued applying our first layer of top coat over the non-skid. The first coat took a bit more time and paint because the soft sand absorbed so much of it on the first pass. But now we're fighting every day there's rain and we're dodging the radar and what the radar is telling us and then what actually happens are not meshing well at all. So it showed that we had a break in the weather that would offer us enough time to be able to run some more paint on our non-skid, but nay! <laughs> are, we, radar was are, you, are you guys standing guard from that stuff over there? Yeah. So we're watching what's happening, paying attention because radar is terrible. And if we need to, we're going to pull this plastic back over what we just painted to protect it from the wet until it dries enough to where it could get wet. But keep in mind, all of the hardware is off the boat, so we got to cover it with plastic anyway so that it doesn't rain inside the salon. So radar is telling us it looks like that. In actuality, it looks like that. So, thank you for standing guard. No. Ah! Four coats of top coat later, peeling the tape was so satisfying. We feel really accomplished after all of that hard work and are so happy with the final results. There are so many aspects of this boat repair process that Ty took on mostly exclusively. This particular project was definitely a group effort and we all contributed 100%. Join us next week while we paint at all hours of the day and night to avoid storms and heat to make our new home look brand new.